Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today we are in Columbia, Pennsylvania, downtown, where a lot of people are looking at me very strangely right now, I gotta say. Uh, but we are at Burning Bridge Antiques, again in Columbia, Pennsylvania. Um, we're gonna get inside, see how it is. I've never been here before, so I'm excited to check it out. There it is. Let's do this, guys. Again, here you can see the exterior. Now it does wrap around. We've got some great display windows out front. Um, so yeah, here's our entrance. Let's do this, guys. Alrighty, guys, here we are on the entrance and talk about first impressions. I was immediately in love. It's a great space. I love the tin ceilings. I think that's tin. It's painted. I don't know. Um, but it's cool nonetheless. Great building, great vibes, lots to look at. There is a downstairs as well as an upstairs. And of course, in today's video, we will be getting to all three floors. And first off here, as you enter in and go to the right past the staircase, there are some display cases. I love looking in the display cases. You never know what you're going to find. Of course, you know that I love it when the prices are available. I hate bothering um, the employees when I have to say, I can't see how much that is. So I always kind of judge it based upon the other items that I am seeing. Nice little hallway shot. Now here we are seeing um, some, what I do believe is Northwood glass. Unfortunately, there is a branch that is broken here in this beautiful blue opalescent. It was priced accordingly at just $17, which again, I think if the appropriate or the right collector comes along, they're not gonna mind it. Now in that same, or I believe it was next to, um, we do have this Pierrot. It is actually a lollipop display. So this would set in like a drugstore's counter and you would have all the little pops that would be in there. I think that's really cute, but makes a great figural piece. Now we are a little bit further down. Um, and the first thing that catches my eye is, I believe again, another Jefferson piece of glass. I love, the, obviously the color caught my eye. Um, and then upon further inspecting it, um, it seemed that it had like some internal fracturing. Now I do believe that this might have been caused due to overexposure to heat or even perhaps to the cold. Um, it is an antique piece of glass. It's unfortunate. I almost missed it and I was really debating. I was like, is this supposed to be a form of crackle? Uh, I don't believe that it is. Um, and because of that uncertainty, I just couldn't warrant getting it. I think that it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the very organic sculptural details to it, but I just didn't want to take the risk. Now here we've got some Fenton and this is the Lily of the Valley. Um, I love this pink opalescent. It was priced at only $27. Now it is Fenton glass. However, the subject matter kind of scared me away. Um, the baskets. Little Jack in the pulpit back there. They did, I believe, have it labeled as Fenton. Again, we are seeing more Lily of the Valley and the blue opalescence. You guys know I have a thing for, for opalescence. Uh, in my opinion, you can just never go wrong. And this vendor had some good opalescent glass, folks, let me tell you. Again, I do believe that's a Jefferson, the blue opalescence. And then out of the corner of my eye, I spotted a little piece of Roseville over here. It was priced at $45. I really couldn't see it as the pine cone. Um, I couldn't see the overall quality of the piece. So I did uh, decide to leave that one behind. Now this vendor had some really interesting things. Um, we've got kind of like some devil salt and pepper shakers here. Look at that actual skeleton key. I think that is absolutely amazing. The item that most caught my eye was this dice set back here. This is produced by Royal Bay Ruth. They are extraordinarily collectible and very hard to find, especially in good condition. Um, and they were, of course, priced accordingly. We're not mad at it though. No, we're not. These little sci-fi salt and pepper shaker sets, those are cute. And then I did see this Czechoslovakian. It is a, um, I believe it's to hold your pipe tobacco. I don't know that you actually smoked out of it. If you did, oh my goodness, that's a lot of tobacco. Um, I've seen a lot of those on eBay, so I didn't think it was really that unique. Now here we are seeing, of course, guess what? More opalescence. Again, this is a Jefferson pattern. 
Now, I don't know the actual names to a lot of the Jefferson patterns. I'm, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. What I do know is that I love a sale. <laughs> Now, the vendor behind them had some Van Briggle. I absolutely love this, and it is a pottery company out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Now, it was a little steep at $65. However, there was a sale, and I did decide to go ahead and take a risk on it. I've never bought a Van Briggle piece before for resale, so I was excited to get it, and I wanted to kind of play around and see. Would I do it again? Probably not at that price point if I were to find something a little bit less expensive. Though I did, it did sell. Um, this is the whole ebb and tide pattern. I actually own this particular piece. I absolutely love this pattern. Um, it's very much supposed to be very aquatic in style. They've got a number of pieces and there's a few different colored glazes. I do prefer the more earthy tones. Um, I think they have a, like a pink and a black and I believe a yellow or like a chartreuse. I could be wrong on the chartreuse. It was priced fairly. Um, that particular piece, there's not a whole lot of demand for that one. Uh, they do have a planter or vase, if you would prefer, um, that has some fish. Oh, look, more opalescence. Can you imagine? This one is a Fenton. It is an earlier piece of Fenton glass. Um, she's got some weight on it. The vendor did have it priced and labeled as Fenton. It was only $12. So, um, hmm. Got some Ellie Smith in here, a little bit more of the Fenton. We've got some Indiana glass there. And then down at the bottom, we're seeing this beautiful set of blue opalescent. This is Northwood, so she is Victorian era. Now, it, the vendor has lights up green. It does, in fact, contain uranium, though it's not like an anchor hawking or hazel atlas where it's just going to give you the day glow effect. Um, it is very minor, but I do decide to go ahead and pick up both that Fenton clear opalescent vase as well as that North Wood sugar and creamer set. Here we stumbled upon a magical trove of pixies. We have both Treasurecraft and Gilner. Um, they both Treasurecraft and Gilner have glazed bodies, but typically their faces are left in bisque and hand painted. It's difficult to find those with the details still intact. Here we've got a little bit of the hull, H-U-L-L. -L. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the hull, and typically it's because of the color palette that they chose to use, very feminine. Um, below that, we are seeing, of course, some Weller in the Wild Rose pattern. I love this teal color. This is produced in the late 30s. Most of the um, flower patterns, if you were will, in this style uh, were late 30s. Here we've got a little basket at 45. I love the sculptural detail on it. It, it remains very organic in its appearance, so I do appreciate that. All right, we're giving you a little panorama here, folks, so you can kind of see what we're working with. And back here in the back, we spotted, what is this? It's a little bit of the hull. Yeah, it was hull heavy um, in Burning Bridge, and that's totally fine. I know that some people absolutely love it, and there are people that absolutely prefer it over Roseville or over Weller. Um, it's personal preference, folks. That's all it boils down to. And like I said, for me, it really is the color palette. Now here we're seeing a little combination. The vase in the back is whole. However, the wedding basket or wedding vase in the front is Weller. Now the reason, and you're going to say, but Michael, didn't you just say that you liked or didn't like the girly colors? Yes and no. Um, this is really interesting. This is actually a Nilak. I'm probably butchering that poor name. Nilak. <laughs> Nil Oak. <laughs> this is a World War II era. It is entitled, the sculpt itself it is entitled the Victory Vase. Um, at $12, I do decide to go ahead and pick it up, though I do, did discover that it did have, unfortunately, a hairline that went um, all the way through. So it is what it is, but it's still a beautiful piece of pottery. Um, so again, I did pick this one up, even though the color palette isn't to my personal taste. Um, you know, for resale, it's really important to remember that while you are innately attracted to things that you would maybe collect or decorate with, it's important to keep in mind that you're not just buying for yourself and you are buying for others. So that is something you have to keep in mind. Beautiful example of a Majolica Ewer. 
It's massive. That is right. It is huge. And I loved this Murano glass pitcher here. Again, very beautiful. But at $1.95, I wasn't willing to risk it, nor did I really want to mail it. Um, I will say this is that it can be a little scary, especially during very cold, bitter cold um, months to ship glass and ceramic because it has a tendency like we saw earlier on that green opalescent it can fracture and make the glass or ceramic a little bit more brittle beautiful hand painted again another pitcher or should we call it a ewer now let's call it a pitcher because it doesn't have that that pronounced spout on it lots of jewelry in here didn't find anything in here that really really was speaking to me some beautiful lit up display cabinets. Again, don't be afraid of the cabinet just because it's a cabinet and you maybe automatically think, oh, it's going to be more expensive. A lot of times in most vendor or antique malls, the cabinets, it's less expensive for the vendor to rent. Um, and maybe that vendor only has smalls or maybe that vendor doesn't have a lot of items um, for resale. So they don't need a huge space. So don't think that just because it's in a cabinet that somehow it's going to be two or three times more expensive. You guys, you really can find some amazing deals in those cabinets. So don't be deterred. Um, you can sometimes feel a little like, oh, I don't want to bother anybody, but you know what? That's how you get those good deals. I'm telling you. Now, this vendor had a really cute display for Valentine's or spring, if you would prefer, um, down here. Again, it was very cheerful. It was bright. It was well lit. And I loved the fact that they put this pink fur or shag carpet, if you will. I think that it just really made the overall display pop out and definitely stand out. It's always in those little details that really catch your eye. And again, one thing that always is going to catch my eye is a sale. Um, back here in the back, we have a Frank Art style, or more specifically, Frank Art inspired a new art. Um, so the way to determine it is, is that heavier sculpts or, or more sculptural detail typically are in the new art style, where a lack of detail is typically going to be a Frank Art. Frank Art is both copyrighted as well as the sarsaparilla markings, both are legitimate. So we're just checking out all the little funsies here in the cabinets. You never know. Oh, did I just miss a piece of Weller Luelsa? I think I might have tucked back there in the back. Love these art glass clowns. These are decanters. The hats are removable. I love how the vendor put in there. Be careful. Multiple pieces. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff. It's hard to keep track of what's what and what'll break and what comes apart. So those notes are always appreciated, I'm sure, for everybody that is working there. Next to it, they had a postcard or greeting card little scrapbook here um, obviously being in a case i couldn't determine if it was kind of assembled by the vendor or if it was assembled back in the day here we've got some again beautiful blue opalescent again antique fenton early fenton glass here it's absolutely beautiful price at 28 dollars i think is very reasonable um, the reason I decided to leave them behind is because I've been selling a lot of the early Fenton opalescent vases, so I kind of want to keep it a little fresh, a little dynamic. Here we've got a beautiful pottery frog. Now this one to me, mm, based on the glaze and the overall sculpt, could be a Weller or a, uh, I'm going to lean more Weller. Um, there was a chip on it, so I did decide to leave it behind though again for the right collector. Here we've got another Weller wedding vase. It was only $18 again in the wild rose. So I do decide to go ahead and get this one. And I was super excited to see an original sticker. You guys, that thing has been on there since the thirties. Um, so again, it just makes it a little bit more unique. Here we are seeing a Majolica Jardinier. Um, I couldn't determine there were so many companies that made Jardiniers. Um, and a lot of them are unmarked. So it really is going to rely on the pattern to determine who made it. Now, I don't think that it was a Weller. Of course, we've got some beautiful uranium glass. Great for those UV displays. Perfect for Halloween, though, too. Um, you know, if you are able to set up a blacklight display. 
Now, back here in this booth, you know, this isn't truthfully kind of my vibe or my aesthetic. However, I can appreciate the attention to detail as well as um, all of the items that have been put in here. You can tell that there is definitely a passion um, for the railroad memorabilia. So I did want to highlight that. Again, another sale. We love a sale and we love an antique mall um, that has got a lot of vendors with a lot of sales in it. Alrighty, so here we are seeing some Victorian, and I was like, is that a spot on my camera? No, it is a spot on the glass. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Some great photo albums back here. And we are seeing a bronze figural piece. I really like that bronze figural piece. The one there to the left does have a celluloid cover, which was in great condition because those have a tendency to crack. Here we've got some crystalline glaze um, glass. There is a specific uh, manufacturer, and I can't off the top of my head remember who it is, but the desirability, um, and by desirability, I mean resale value is through the roof. Um, I did not believe it was that one. I could not see a, a signature. Down below, I was seeing these little Austrian vases here with the little figural pieces. They're absolutely adorable. In the back, we are seeing, of course, a desk set with your inkwells. I loved it. It was an amazing condition. Everything was present. Now, I don't know how I missed these when I walked in, but it is a set of Weller vases. For the pair, it is priced at $115. And let me tell you what, I hemmed and hauled and hemmed and hauled. And I know that some people are going to be shocked but I did leave these ones behind. Um, I don't know. I think that this is kind of a regret on my end. Um, I think that, I, what is that math? 115 divided by two is like less, it's like 5750. Look at me figuring it all out. Um, here are some Murano glass dancing figures. These are priced at $75 individually. That is a tremendous deal. Um, unfortunately, and you really have to look. The one in the back, the foot is broken. The one on the, the forefront here, there are some damages to the ruffles in the glass. Again, it's perfect for a collector that isn't going to mine the damage. Um, but to resell those, especially at a profit, I would need them to be in better condition. So obviously we are headed downstairs, folks. There's a lot to see and it's a little bit of a maze. I kind of was trying to figure out where best to film or more specifically where to start filming so that I could kind of go in order. We're going to go to the back. That seems like a good place, right? The back and we can work our way forward. So that is what we are doing. And then I was like, wait, there's another room over here. Let's go in there. Perfect. <laughs> Such a nerd. <laughs> Here we go up through the staircase. A lot of um, more mantiques kind of over here in the left hand corner. That doesn't stop me from looking. Nothing stood out to me. What did stand out to me was this large pink Hager gazelle. Um, it, it, it was large and in charge. It's priced at only $75, which I think is a great deal for a collector. That said, I did have to take shipping into consideration um, and mailing a piece that big. I mean, depending on the buyer, it could be quite substantial. Now, over here, tucked away in the corner, I am seeing this Majolica Jardinier stand, and I'm seeing on top of it what appeared to be a Weller piece to me. It was unmarked. There was no incise marks on it. It reads a little woodcraft to me, with the exception of those handles on the side. Um, I don't know. I just was like, mm, how much are you? Priced at $75, and then they did the work for me. They said that it was McCoy. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Very good condition, I will say. And at $75, it, it's not the world's worst price, especially for a size that big. Then I was curious about the stand. 55 That is, That's a really good deal. Now, this is a relatively smaller one. 
um, there are much larger and there are ones that are extraordinarily more ornate. Um, this is a more simple one. There was no incise mark on it. There was no stamp. Um, I did elect to leave it behind because they do have coordinating jardiniers that go with them and the likelihood of finding the appropriate or the identical matching jardiniere can be a little bit difficult and you can't have a mismatch if you're down with that but of course me I have to have the exact match Alrighty, guys, we are here in the back um, and we've got a little bohemian look going on here. And I really respect and appreciate, again, the vendor put some time and effort in here. And I loved the fact that there was this exposed stone wall and they really used it to their advantage. I think it was the perfect aesthetic. It almost in a way reminded me of a Laverne and Shirley apartment. You remember how they were um, in the basement area with the windows at the top. I mean, obviously Laverne and Shirley, Shirley weren't very boho-y. Um, <laughs> boho Bohemian. It's high end. You have to say bohemian with your pinky up, you know. I think she, this vendor had her pinky up when she was decorating. Good on you. I appreciate it. And I loved how she kind of separated everything out here. It made it a lot easier to shop. Something that caught my eye was this amazing set of wild poppies here. This is the, oh, pardon me, Iris. It is a culver and it does have its original. This is metal. It's obviously made to look like rattan or bamboo. Um, it was in great condition. The price was spot on. There was a few dollars from what I was seeing in sold comps, um, but the shipping of that would have been a nightmare. And I was just like, I don't feel like it. <laughs> I just, I just wasn't in the mood. Um, this is really interesting. It is in like this clam broth glass with this gray deco-y. Um, I think that you could argue that this could go very well in a mid-century um, home. However, given uh, again, the glass being uh, clam broth, I think that it is definitely older um, than the 50s or 60s. This is leaning a little bit more late 20s to mid 30s in my opinion. Alrighty, guys, we are now about to head upstairs. Oh, yeah, we're not done. There is more to check out, you guys. And by more, I mean the second, or are we going to call it the third floor? Well, technically, it's the second floor. We were just on the first floor and into the basement. So we're headed upstairs. Here we go. Yep. And I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little out of breath. By the time I got to the top of the stairs, I was like... <sighs> Free exercise with purchase. <laughs> Thanks, Burning Bridge. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Here we've got a vendor that has got a lot of glass pieces. And, of course, we had to stop in here. I will say this. There were some a couple of interesting pieces. Uh, but a lot of, like, orphans, shall we say. First thing that caught my eye, oh look, surprise, surprise, it's a piece of opalescent. Now I do believe this is Fostoria. Um, I love, ooh, look at it, it glows. It's so good. Fostoria does an amazing job with their opalescence. Obviously it is a tapered candle holder. It would have been part of a console set. Um, again, it was an orphan, it was here by itself. Right for the perfect collector, though I will say we are still in the winter months. You could certainly use this in your winter display. Talking about an orphan, here we have got the shade to a fairy lamp. Unfortunately, there was no base. Don't tell Misty. She's going to be upset that I left the piece behind. I know. Shh, don't tell her, though. Don't tell her. We'll keep it a secret. I won't tell if you don't tell. <laughs> No, but seriously, there can be, and there is, I shouldn't say there can be, but there is value um, in finding mismatched pieces. You know, you never know. Somebody might have found the base and they're desperately seeking, um, not Susan, but the lid or the, the shade to their fairy lamp. Here we have got some beautiful monster glass. This, in fact, does not glow, which is shocking. You would most certainly think that that beautiful jewel emerald green would glow, but monster glass typically does not. Here we are seeing the little red riding hood set. I love the, there are a number of manufacturers who did produce 
um, the Little Red Riding Hood set. This is absolutely darling. Can you just imagine though going over to somebody's home for tea and this is what you were served with? You know, there's such a charm and whimsy to it. Now here we see a Roseville wannabe. Um, it's priced at $48. In my opinion, this is a reproduction. Yes, it does in fact have the mark on it, but it is the weight, the feel, it is the overall quality. Do you see how blocky that coloring is? There's like the airbrushing isn't appropriate to the piece. So let me know if I'm wrong, but I really do think that's a reproduction piece, which is quite prevalent. Um, the milk glass vase, Fenton, pitcher, I should say, those typically don't do too well. Um, I, I don't know. I think the handle's a little too distracting. The little doll there I actually have purchased before and resold him. Again, here we have got some Roseville-ish. <sighs> I don't think it is. I don't know. I could be wrong on this one. This one's got me a little befuddled. So please let me know down in the comments. Like I said, I'm kind of new to the Roseville Weller, the pottery game. Um, so I'm trying my best to kind of be very cautious in the things that I am picking up. Speaking about picking up things, this is absolutely amazing. It obviously is this divided tray. Unfortunately, it was missing one of the elephants on the back. It was priced at $56. Obviously, it contains uranium glass. I loved this. If it had that third elephant, it probably would have been more. Um, I don't know. Again, it's something that would be for the right collector that doesn't mind some damage. And again, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. Just because something is broken or damaged does not make it value less. Is it less desirable? Is it as valuable as something that was in pristine condition? Well, of course not. But that doesn't mean to say that there isn't somebody out there that would absolutely love it and doesn't mind that there's a missing elephant or that there's a chip somewhere especially if you can hide it you know so if you are that collector and look i get it there are die hard things and you you know you're like no i want everything to be pristine and on and i want it to look like it's brand new there is nothing wrong with that either you know i think that both frames of mind can exist simultaneously within the collecting uh, world so here we are seeing an absolutely amazing lamp. Do you see the shade? That color on that fiberglass shade was amazing. Very mid-century here. Love these glasses. I love the black and the gold. It is patriotic in theme. That does, I will say in my experience, the patriotic stuff is, is can be a little bit of a difficult sell depending again on the manufacturer. Um, but absolutely gorgeous to look at, I will say that. Got some more Culver, we've got a little Royal Copley there. But the thing that really caught my eye were these bookends. Obviously these are Asian, I do believe that is specifically Chinese. Um, he does seem to be mixing, I believe it is ink, if I am not mistaken. Um, do you see how small the details, right? The hands are, uh, the body itself is in um, like a cast metal, a pot metal. The hands, the head, those are actually in like a celluloid, a plastic. Um, these are JB Hirsch. They are in overall really good condition. Unfortunately, unfortunately, his friend here does or is missing his hand. So I did leave those behind. I do have quite a few J.B. Hirsch pieces. Um, I absolutely love the sculptural detail on them. Here, of course, we are seeing some uh, flower frogs. I almost called them figural. <laughs> um, I have a thing for the Roseville, the Donatella as well as the Florentine. I love those Greek revival, though I would argue that I think that they're a little bit more Roman. Um, but, you know, to each their own, who am I? Um, and underneath that, we've got some Santa Claus, because why not? Christmas year round, folks. Christmas year round. And again, we're seeing some Roseville down here. Do you see that tiny little ewer there? Um, I will say this. There is quite a bit of desirability. Um, again, another, uh, that was not Roseville. It was Van Briggle, pardon me. Um, and another Van Briggle piece here in the Mulberry. Again, another piece of Van Briggle in the white glaze. I have to say, oh, Michael, that was only $20? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, oh, well. 
<laughs> well, guys, that is it. On that note, we'll wrap it up outside. Well, guys, there you have it. It was an amazing experience. Amazing people. Cindy, dreams do come true. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, I hope that you had a good time today. I know that I did. It was a great ambiance, extraordinarily gracious and friendly staff. I highly recommend it. Um, check it out. I hope you guys liked what we got today. And uh, yeah, so until next time, guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.